Hi everybody, Leslie here. Well, today I'm sharing one of these sliding puzzle cards that I've been making for a few weeks now. And this one's using lovely Lavinia stamps and they do a lot of beautiful stamps. And this one with the silhouettes, they seem to work really well. So this is a sliding puzzle card. So as you can see, you don't need any special equipment to make these. You build up all the the base piece. You just need scissors, trimmer, really basic crafting stuff. And then you can build up these fab sliding puzzle cards. And you can put anything you want on the top panels, provided you can still cut through it when you're finished. So as long as you can still cut through it, anything you want can go on this top panel. Now, I have shown this card in another video, but I realise my videos are getting just too ridiculously long. So this is a little bite size version. And if you've already watched the big long video that this is in, there's nothing new in this one. Um, I'm not going to do any more really, really long videos. I'm going to try and keep them a bit shorter, but I will add chapters um, to this. So you can, I'll separate it so that you can see if you're interested in the top panel, how I created that rather than the puzzle mechanism, you can separate those bits out and watch the different bits. So they'll be in chapters. So you should be able to skip around if you'd rather want to see how the mechanism's made. So this one was using imperial measurements. This one's all in one inch squares. So, and this is a five by five card panel on a six inch card blank. So it's all square and yeah, stands up, not too much dimension. So you can send it in the post. And yeah, I really love these. It adds another extra thing for your recipient, you know, that they might keep hold of that your card, handmade cards a bit longer. So if you are already subscribed, if you hit the notify bell, if you want to know when I do post new videos, um, I'm going to try and, like I say, make them all a bit shorter and a bit more bite sized so you can skip around and watch shorter versions because I realise not everybody's got an hour and a quarter to spend on a single video. So hopefully you'll find something you like and you'll enjoy these shorter videos. So let's get on and make this lovely card. I thought I would use some of my lovely Lavinia stamps because I've not used any of them yet. Um, so I think this one's called Fairy Web. I've got Tree Goddess, I think this was called. Then I've got a greeting that says, have a fairy happy birthday. And then I've got the miniature slender mushrooms. So these are all Lavinia stamps, which is British company, laviniastamps.co.uk. The ones that I got off Facebook Marketplace, you can see these were really well used. So well loved stamps. So they're new to me, but they're not new. So hopefully they'll all stamp okay. And I thought I'd do some nice um, autumnal colours. We're in September, so I thought I'd go for kind of sunset autumny colours. So I've got Distress Oxide, I've got Scattered Straw, Rusty Hinge, Crackling Campfire, Lumberjack Plaid, and I'm going to do Versafine over the top after I've made some sort of lovely background with the Distress Oxide. So I thought I'd go with a 5x5 five five card just because that's sort of what fits the stamp. This is just like a... They're like the drip trays that you, they use on bars and you can get them on Amazon. I'll link them if I can find the ones that I've used and they just hold, oh, I haven't opened this yet. They just hold the ink pads whilst you're ink blending. And this is a new to me, my new Distress Oxide. This is one of the last two colours that I didn't have and I got this at a craft show last weekend. So my Distress Oxide, until Mr. Holtz releases some more, I've got them all. So you can see I've just gone for nice autumny colours. I've got three blending brushes ready. I'll have to reuse some. If you're using one of these blending mats that holds the ink on it, make sure you turn it with your card. I turned the card and not the blending mat and now I've got the red up on the yellow. 
but it doesn't matter. We're over stamping and splattering and things. It won't matter. It's not a perfect blend, but it's fine for me. This is a one of those craft spritzer bottles and I've got some perfect pearls in the bottom here. So I'm just going to give it a really good shake and get the perfect pearls so it's mixed back through the water. And because this tends to go everywhere, oops, just give it. And what this will do, it'll give it a really lovely shimmery effect. And because I want to use this quite quickly, I am just going to heat dry. You could just leave it, but I am going to give it a quick heat blast. So hopefully, yeah, I'm hoping that you can see on camera that the Perfect Pearls has just given it a really nice shimmer and it is all over. And I don't mind that I got some little spots. I'm stamping over, like I said, in black. It's just to give me some interesting background. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll stamp the cobweb in this top corner. And then if it's not quite to the edges, I'll just extend it with my pen. So I'll just find a black pen to extend with. And I need to clean my Misty. My daughter's been at it again. Just making sure my card's in that bottom corner. Beautiful. Let's just give it a little press in the middle. Oh, and I've moved it. Never mind, it's cobweb, it doesn't matter. But that's what happens if you don't manage to push it straight back down in the corner. It was perfect first time, but I've got double stamp. But fortunately, because it is the cobweb, I don't actually think it matters. So I'm not going to worry. These things happen. All I've done to finish off my panel is I used my Spectrum Noir Art Liner, which is just a black fine liner pen, just to extend any little bits of the cobweb out to the edge. And I did a tiny bit on the tree and a tiny bit on the bottom of the mushrooms. But don't do what I do and have all inky hands and get it all over your panel. I'm just going to carry on and use it because I don't think anyone will really notice once it's all cut up. And I did overstamp ever so slightly on the Have a Fairy Happy Birthday. But it kind of looks like it's shadow off her feet. So I've just gone with it. So you can see it's all nice and sparkly. And that's all ready to go. So that's on a five inch square. So what you need to make your puzzle, I'm going to leave that drying. And hopefully I won't get any more inky splodges on it. So you need a backing piece. It can be in any colour, but you will it will show through so i just went with craft because i've got loads of long strips of craft and um, thought i'd use some of it up and i've just gone consistent with one color so but it can be any color you won't see it once the puzzle's made so i've got another five inch square and then i've got five strips they're five inches wide by half an inch and they can all just be scraps so five inches by half an inch wide, five of them, because this is a five inch square. And then we need six. So however many inches you're doing, plus one, that are three quarters of an inch wide. So they're five inches, same width, but this time we've the three quarters of an inch and we've got six of them. And it'll become clear in a second what we're doing with everything. So on your five inch square, you want to mark at one, two, three, four, inches so just mark at each inch and draw a line across do it in pencil you'll never see it it's going to disappear in a second so you just want to mark and i've just done it this so that it's a bit quicker so i drew a straight line across and i've stuck my foam tape across each of those lines and i just used my board to line it up with my lines so that i got these nice and straight you're looking for something that's roughly 
two millimeters, three sixteenths of an inch in depth, and about five millimeters, which is about three eighths of an inch wide, something like that. But this, you can see the sort of scale of it. So you want a piece at the top and a piece at the bottom, just right on the edge, which is what they are. They're right on the edge. And then where you've marked your lines at one inch all the way up. So you end up with nice, evenly spaced lines like this. The top and the bottom one will be slightly narrow, but that's OK. It all works out. You don't need to worry about it. It does all work. So for the half inch wide ones, you want to do the same thing. You want to stick a piece across the back in the middle back front doesn't matter they're the same on both sides in my case but if you've if you are using scraps that's got stamping say on one side or inky mess on one side stick your foam tape on that side because you'll never see this side this side you'll see so if you if you are using real scraps with ink or something on them and this is what I mean about using your board just line it up so I haven't drawn a line across on these I'm just lining it the center up with a line on my glass mat if you've got a cutting mat with straight lines and I'm just eyeballing it so that it goes straight across the middle. So that's all of our sticking part done. So these are the big pieces that are going to slide in and out with our puzzle piece on. Don't cut them up yet. This is how we get our spacing nice. Okay so they're just sitting in there. Everything's five inches wide. Now, so we've got one, two, three, four, five slots. So we've got kind of a middle. So this one's in the middle. So you want to start with one of these two either side. Don't pull your tape off this piece, okay? You want to take your tape off one of the ones either side of the middle. The spacing ends up better if we do it this way. And we're just going to sit our first one in the middle of that. It doesn't need to be dead, dead accurate. It just needs to be straight across the middle, square like that. Okay. So that's our first one stuck down. Okay. And then we're going to work our way upwards here. So our piece that's going to slide in and out, you just want to butt it up to it. Not really, really tight. So I'm just butting that up and I'm just holding it. And then the piece that's already stuck down, I've taken the backing off that. And I'm going to butt this one up to the one that we've got there hold, that I'm holding. I'm just going to butt it up to it again try and get it as square as you can with your edges so now this piece slides in and out okay so you don't want it so tight that you can't move this but you don't want too much wiggle room either so this slides in and out nicely and then push those down and then do the same thing so I slide in and out one just hold it so it's just touching take off the tape off the top one and don't worry this will overhang this top edge quite a lot don't worry this is why we did it this way it means you don't have to worry about having an accurate measurement at the top okay so again slides in and out okay all happy and then we're just going to turn it over do the other thing same going upwards i find it easier Flipping it over, you can work your way downwards if you prefer, but I found it easier working this way. So take that one off. So this is my slidey in and out piece. I'm just holding on to it. And I'm just going to butt it up to it. It's not as tight as I'd like it to be. It's not the end of the world. It just means the pieces will be slightly looser, but I don't think my phone tape oh no you know it's such a hot day my phone tape let go of it it is it's about 30 31 degrees something like that today in Windsor 
and that's in Celsius or centigrade. It's, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, I'm afraid, but um, it's hot. <laughs> it's forecast to be, even though it is, what, the 7th of September as I'm filming this, it is forecast to be the hottest day of the year so far. So unlike a lot of places in the world, we've not had the hottest of summer. So there we go. So we've got slidey in and out, slidey in and out, slidey in and out, slidey in and out, slidey in and out. Now, keeping those just in that order, you want to flip it over and anything hanging off the back, you just want to trim off now. So we're not trimming our five inch panel, just anything that's got any little, tiny little overhang. And I've done pretty well on both sides. Top and bottom, you'll take any of that overhang off. So there we go, we've got our background ready to go. So these now all need to be cut to one inch wide. Now, it's up to you how you do that. You can mark them, you can do it on your trimmer, you can do it with your scissors. And at this point, I do slide them all back in just to keep them so I don't lose any. Okay, so the last step is to cut this up and stick it to our little foam shapes. This five inch square is going to get cut into one inch strips and then we'll cut it the other way to make it into one inch squares. And you don't have to have a guillotine, you can do this on a trimmer, whatever cutting platform you prefer. So just get them all lined back up. So you can see I'm just using a piece of scrap just to keep everything at this end. So everything's pushed against the bottom keeping everything the right way up. So we need to start in a corner. I always start in my bottom corner. I'm going to take the backing off my first strip. I'm going to get my first little square, get it tight lined up into this corner and stick it down. Okay, so our first piece is done and it's in there. And don't worry if your little pieces aren't quite lined up tight to each other. We'll give them all a little trim at the end. So holding it in there, lining my next piece up with the bottom and with the side. Hopefully it's gone in straight. So I'm just going to go along and do each row exactly the same. And every single time I've done it, I end up with it hanging out at the end here. Don't worry, we'll just give them all a little trim. So there we go. So. Even though I cleaned my hands, not with water, with um, hand sanitizer, so alcohol gel, before I started, I have spread more <laughs> and more of the black ink, so it really isn't drying today. But hopefully you can see that's all nice and flat, and it will all sit flat. So all you need to do is slide all your pieces out. On the back, if there's anything just hanging off, can you see this edge there? I've got my scissors tipped. I'm not cutting the top panel at all. And any little bits that might be able to see, I'm just gonna give them a little trim. Okay, 
I've already dropped my card blank on the floor and made a right old mess of it. But it doesn't matter because you're not going to see. So I've got marks all over this. So all I'm going to do is make a frame so that she'll sit in the middle of my card like that. And we'll put a black frame, I think, around her because I think that'll look nice with the black stamp in. So you can do it one of two ways. You can stick this onto another panel before you put it onto here, or you can stick it directly onto your card. I'm going to have a go at doing that and try and get it in the middle. And to help me do that, I am, because my board's got centimetres, not inches on it, I am going to get out my cutting board that's got inches on it because it'll just help me line it up better. And once I've got the frame on these, all, obviously it'll stop falling off. It's not perfectly square, but it'll do. It's not too bad. Now, so the way I did this is this is my thicker foam tape. So it's the same one. And all I did to make my frames was with my top row in place is do a line of foam tape so this is slightly thicker and butt it up to it and then this acts as a stopper on this side as well just got some scraps of black card I'm just going to cut myself six inches which is what this is more or less and I might do them all at half an inch so these ones will just sit around like this it's not the straightest on the card so the frame's not going to be straight either but hey we're handmade, we're not Hallmark, we're not machines. And then the last one, I'll just stick it in there. So just to neaten it up, I've just trimmed it. So there we go. Considering I stuck that on really really badly it's not actually turned out too badly at all so there we go with our black frame around it there's a tiny bit of my white card showing here but you won't notice it I don't think once it's stood up if you're not very good at getting things to stick square when you're making things don't stick it directly on your card blank stick it on a piece of card that's bigger than you need it to be so in this case six inches square Stick it down, make your frame round the outside and then come back and cut around with your half inch border around and then stick that onto your card blank. And I should have done that because I never get it to right work. I'm not very good at making things square. So there we go. So stands up, add your greeting, whatever you want inside. The pieces only slide out from this side. So if you put it in an envelope with it done or when you mix this up you do need to keep them on the right lines because because we're not doing really accurate measuring they won't sit flat so if you send it with it mixed up just keep them on mixed up on the same lines it tends to work the best or what I've done the only one that I've sent to anybody so far I sent it with all the pieces just loose in the envelope or you could put them in a little clear bag in the envelope so that they don't slide around but yeah hopefully you can see the shimmer on that not too many of the smudgy marks but yeah handmade don't worry about the smudges nobody especially on something like this where it's a lovely silhouette nobody will really notice in fact some of the smudges round her face almost look again like on purpose shadows but yeah, sadly, I think it's just too humid for anything to dry properly t today. 
So hopefully you enjoyed that and you can see how you make these cards now. Um, I'll stick a link um, to a playlist that's got loads of other sliding puzzle cards on, all different shapes, different sizes. I've done them with smaller pieces and I've done them with a shaker so that you can add all sorts of different things to them as well with frames, without frames. So obviously this one's got the frame on it and I've done them without frames as well. So I'll stick a link to that. And I'm thinking, is it time for Christmas cards yet? Shall we skip the autumn ones now and go straight to Christmas or is it too early for Christmas? Pop a comment, let me know what you think. And yeah, if you're already sub subscribed and you want notifying, I know I'm not consistent when I upload videos. I just do them whenever they're ready. So if you hit the notify, it will notify you when you, I do a new video. And if you've not already subscribed and you really enjoyed this content, then, you know, it'd be lovely if you'd subscribe and like the video. Then YouTube knows that, you know, people are watching and enjoying it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.